to the first of a series of webinars that we've got planned for this year and believe it or not we've started planning them out for next year as well. We've got quite a lot and we've got Adobe Education Leaders all booked in for uh, a lot of them and I'm going to be running quite a few of them particularly for teachers in the Asia Pacific region just to make sure that we are well and truly catered for. So this is the first of many to come and really looking forward to, uh, to hearing from our Adobe Education Leaders and uh, seeing what they have to share about a range of Adobe tools and how they're being used to enhance creativity in the teaching and learning process. Just before we start this, I'd like for those of you who have joined us, we've got 13 participants, so welcome those of you who are with us live. If you wouldn't mind filling out the polls that are in this uh, on this page at the moment in front of you, just to give you maybe 30 more seconds to fill out those polls before we jump into the actual session itself. So thank you for joining us live. Those of you who are watching the recording of this, then uh, just uh, make sure that you do register for uh, future events and uh, if you can for the times that are good for you because it's always great to contribute live. I'd like to thank Brett Kent who's helping to support this particular webinar at the moment. Brett's a, a very well-known New South Wales primary school teacher and an Adobe education leader. And uh, Brett is here. Good evening. There he is. Thanks, Brett. And uh, so I think I've given you guys enough time now to fill out those polls. I'm just going to do a quick screen grab of the results so far, so I've got those all done. And let's get cracking. So we'll go into the sharing mode now. Just about to share my screen. I thought what I'd do with this particular webinar is go straight and do the whole thing on Acrobat. So instead of using PowerPoint or Keynote, I thought I'd uh, go and make it all a, a nice sort of slide-based PDF. Now if I go Command L, it should go into a full screen mode. And the title of this particular webinar is Acrobat Pro 101 for Teachers and Administrators. And I did notice that in the poll just before that quite a number of the people who are here live have already got experience with Acrobat, which is terrific. Hopefully I'll be able to teach you a few tips and tricks and things that you may not have picked up in the past and uh, some of you may not have used this much at all so I'm hoping that uh, you'll find it really beneficial. Every so often I'm going to stop talking and just let Brett let me know if there's any questions from you guys or um, anything that uh, technically may have uh, gone astray. But for those who haven't met me, my name is Tim and I'm the Senior Education Advocate for Asia Pacific uh, for Adobe. I've had 23 years in the classroom as a school teacher in Melbourne and I taught primary, I taught secondary, and I taught a little bit of tertiary education as well at Swinburne University. So I've really enjoyed the last 12 months, just over 12 months now, 13 months I suppose, uh, since I started at Adobe and having this opportunity to do these type of things with educators all over the world. And it's been an incredible privilege and an incredible opportunity. And uh, one thing I didn't know much about before I started at Adobe was Acrobat. Now I've put that slide in because every so often I forget to record and that's going to remind me. So we are recording so we're good to go. So the uh, workshops that we've got planned um, are all advertised on the Adobe Education Exchange and I've created a little bit.ly URL there for you to make it easy to find. And uh, there's uh, also um, a, a webinar series that has been floating around through email that outlines all the all the webinars that are particularly friendly for APAC time and uh, they're the ones that are listed as you can see there. But if you want to find out more, just note that when you do go to the Education Exchange, generally it's the American times that are there. You can see probably in the in the screenshot that I've got for you. I'll see if I can magnify that. I don't know if that'll work for you guys. I'm just looking at my iPad to see if that does work. Not sure if it is. Brad, is that magnifying for you or is it, uh, is it just staying the same? Hi right, Tim, it's, uh, it's, it's just your standard screen there. No worries, all right. I won't bother magnifying them. It does say 1am, so just know that it is 1am in America at the moment, so that's why the time is there. We've had a few teachers emailing me just saying, look, I can't possibly be getting up at 1am to do these webinars, and I've tried to explain and say, look, it is 1am in the US. It's uh, a much better time for us here. This is a good time now because it's... Um, after school in Western Australia and it's around dinner time, maybe just after dinner time in New Zealand. So this is a good time. And some of them will be 8 o'clock in the morning for Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane time until we get to daylight savings. 
So as Brett said earlier, two just before we recorded, that the next one is well worth attending, and that's uh, uh, Rob Swart doing a session on Illustrator, and there he is. And that'll be on Thursday for us, Thursday, September the 4th at 8 a.m. Well worth uh, getting involved in that if you can. If you can't, make sure you check the recording. A big promo for the Adobe Campus Leader Program too, by the way. If you're not sure of it, it's a new program that we started this year to try and get more teachers involved in a global network of, of like-minded educators who are passionate about creativity in education. And if you're interested in becoming an Adobe Campus Leader, just uh, log on to that URL and apply. It's the first step to maybe becoming an Adobe Education Leader like Brett, where you get some incredible opportunities like uh, we flew Brett to uh, California just last month and um, we could spend the whole time just talking about that experience, couldn't we, Brett? But we're not going to. <laughs> we haven't got the time today. Uh, but if you are interested in, in that sort of uh, professional learning and that experience of becoming an Adobe Education Leader, go ahead and join the Adobe Campus Leader Program and that'll be your first stop shop. So for this particular session, <clears throat> I'm going to be showing you these features of Acrobat. We're going to be learning that Acrobat's not just a PDF reader and writer. It actually is a text editor as well. You can edit text, you can add text, you can add images, you can export your PDF to other documents like Word and PowerPoint. You can manipulate hyperlinks, you can manipulate pages within Acrobat. You can even combine files, multiple uh, files, into one PDF. You can edit the design of pages. You can add multimedia content like video and audio. You can even do text recognition, which is quite cool. There's a lot of security features within Acrobat Pro, but the biggest one is the last one there for educators. This is the one I wish I'd known about when I was working as a classroom teacher, and that is the digital portfolio features within Acrobat. Absolutely amazing. So I'm going to whiz through the top ones, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on that last one because that one is the, is the one that I was so impressed with. So I'm um, just going to jump out of that particular slide and I'm going to jump into another PDF and this is the one that's been floating around emails at the moment promoting all these webinars. I'm actually going to use this PDF document as our working tool. So what we can see here is Acrobat opening up a PDF. And you can see a whole range of tools that appear at the top and uh, some on the side as well. But the, the one tool that I'm particularly uh, interested in you guys knowing about is this one here called Tools. When you, when you click on it, it opens up a whole set of tools down the side. Watch what happens when I click Edit Text and Images. As soon as I click on that, anything that's a text or an image gets highlighted. And what I can do now is I can literally go in and make changes. So I can go into that word learning as I'm highlighting and delete it. I can re-add it if I want to. Or I can make a change. In fact, I know that when I first saw this document, one word was missing. So instead of asking the author of this document to go back to whatever they use, maybe InDesign or Publisher or Word or whatever they use to build it, instead of asking them to go back to that, make the change and re-export it as a PDF and send it to me, I just simply click Tools and I added that word. I mean, so simple. And to be honest, so many people don't know that this is a feature of Acrobat Pro. They still see Acrobat as just a PDF reader and writer. So that's the fundamental tool that I wanted you to be aware of, the text editing ability. When you go underneath the text editing, you've got this thing called Add Text. And then I, if I activate that, I can just go into where there's a bit of space on this PDF, highlight an area, and now I've created a text box and I can add in text. Once I've added that text, as you can see it's gradually appearing on the screen, if I highlighted it, then over here on the right I've got a range of different tools I can use to manipulate this text. I can make the font bigger, I can make the font smaller, I can even adjust the font, uh, the actual font itself into whatever I've got on my computer in terms of font. Remember this is going to be a PDF, so even if the other people don't have that font, because you've saved it as a PDF, it should format the way you want it to, to format. Um, I can change bold, italic, underline, I can change my alignment, all the basic formatting tools that you require with any sort of text editor or word processor are available through Acrobat Pro. And that is pretty cool. Tim, just one question that's popped up already. Um, Anne has asked, does this vary according to which version of Acrobat Pro that you have? Good question. I'll just 
bring out my version here. So what I'm working with is Acrobat Pro uh, 11, and that's uh, uh, anything that's from 11 above. So I'm working with 11.0.07. So definitely these features and a whole lot more are available from 11. I do believe that version 10 has most of these features too. Can't guarantee anything below version 10. Maybe someone else who's on the on the webinar at the moment might be able to help us out with that question and give a bit more detail. But that's a really good question. You do need kind of the latest version. So anything that's come through on the Creative Cloud or via CS6, I'd say, uh, anything in the last few years that's Acrobat Pro should have all those features. CS6 was, um, had all those capabilities within it. Um, I know some schools may still run CS5, and I can't vouch for CS5, but um, definitely CS6 would be just fine with that. Yeah. CS6 is now, what is it, four years old? So uh, it's been around for a while. So you'd imagine that most versions of Acrobat Pro would have most of these features. So just jumping back to another feature, let's say I've I've created this PDF and for some reason I wanted to actually export it as a, uh, as a Word document. So I could just go to Export File 2 and I could choose a Word document, I could choose an Excel workbook, I could, I could choose it to be a PowerPoint presentation. Never use that feature but it just happens to be sitting there. But what feature that I have used fairly regularly is this one where you can add or edit links. So I'm just going to scroll down on this page because I know on the second part of it there are a bunch of hyperlinks that are listed there. Now watch what happens when I go added or edit link. When I click that button, all of the hyperlinks or anything that's potentially a hyperlink gets highlighted. Now I can go in, let's have a look at the hyperlink that relates to this particular webinar. If I double click it, it brings up a link properties window where I can go into actions and literally go in and make a change to that link. or make it a totally different link. The other option I could have is um, if I wanted to add a link, I could just sort of make sure that area is highlighted, double click it, and appearance, actions, and this time I want to execute a, what are the options here, uh, open a web link, that would be the most obvious one. But look at all the other options we've got with Acrobat Pro. I could potentially link this to a MP3 file or a uh, a media file of some sort, or uh, there's so many different things you could potentially do with this whole adding or editing link section. But more often than not, it's just going to be a, high, a, um, a URL that you're going to adjust or add to and make a section of your page a web link. You can even sort of uh, create like a little hotspot for everything around that rather than just the text becomes that link. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's good to have a hotspot rather than just relying on the text to be the uh, interactive part. So let's uh, move away from the content editing section into pages. And I'll just uh, get back into a sort of mode that looks better. Now what we can do here, if I open up uh, the multiple pages on this side, you can see that this document has three pages. For some reason, maybe my second page needed to be rotated or or whatever. So if I click onto my second page and go to the rotate option, I can click OK. And oh that's activating all of them there. I just undo that. And just wondering why I'm not my first page, rotate. Oh I can so I can select my pages here from one to one, click OK. So I've now rotated my first page but not my second and my third. You've got that option. I'll just undo that so it comes back to normal again. And notice the other options you've got here, you've got the option to delete a page. So you might have a 30 page document as a PDF and there might be 10 pages you want to get rid of. Great to, to have that, to be able to do that really simply. I could extract just one page from a multi-page document because that's the one page that I want to work with. I can even uh, replace a page with something else, another PDF page. I can crop uh, certain sections of a page, or I could split a document into different sections. Lots of different uh, page options here. We can insert pages, we can uh, add footers and headers to pages, we can add background images or background feelings to pages. This one I used recently is a watermark to a page. 
was a document that I really didn't want to send out without people knowing it was just in draft mode. So I went to watermark and I said add watermark and I said well, well the text will be draft and I want that text to kind of be on a rotation or an angle and I wouldn't mind making it a little bit opaque as well so it doesn't hide what's actually on the, the page itself and click OK. And now you can see that the word draft appears sort of uh, opaquely in the middle of that page. And if you look at the multiple pages on the left, you can see it appears on all of the pages. That's just a nice little tip to be aware of uh, when you're handling documents. Another really cool feature away from this column going up to the top is if I was proofreading this document for my school principal, for instance, uh, or for a secretary that was going to type out uh, for a newsletter or for school or whatever, and I found a typo, or I found a, something that I wanted them to be aware of, I'd go up to here, this little sticky note section, and then choose the word that I wanted to change, and I might write the word spelling issue or something like that. And then when I give it back to them, they'll see this little sticky note, and they can hover their mouse over it, and it just comes up with the issue that, uh, that you typed in or you can click on it and it comes up in a slightly bigger mode. So that's a nice little tip to know about where you can put these little sticky notes on your document. The trick is to get rid of them at the end when you've made the change, and that's just doing a right click, and then going delete, and then the sticky note disappears. So it's a relatively simple process to work through. I'm just going to pause at this stage, Brett, just to see if there's any questions. popped up while you were speaking, but um, I believe I've been able to answer those within the chat pod. Cool. All right, we'll carry on. So I'm just going to jump back to the, uh, the original PDF so we can see what we've covered so far. We've looked at text and image editing. We've looked at adding text. We haven't looked at adding images. Let's have a quick look at that now. If I wanted to add an image, I would go back to my content editing area and go to the add image section. When I click that, I can then go ahead and choose an image. Let's find a nice low res image that will do, only 45 kilobytes. And that image now is kind of hovering a little bit like InDesign, it's sort of hovering around waiting to find a place to add it. So I'll just click in there and my image is now sitting inside the PDF document. I'm just sort of resizing it, moving it around. And if I wanted to move the other image that was there, I'd just go back to text, edit images, and I'd get access to that other image that's sitting there and I can relocate that. So there's a lot of actual desktop publishing you can do within Acrobat Pro, whereas before you had to go back to your InDesign or whatever document you did all the building on and uh, away we go. So that's quite a cool feature. So just jumping back to what we've covered and exploring the world, we've covered hyperlinking, we've covered page editing, we've looked at multiple documents into one PDF really handy feature. Let's uh, go back to my uh, my original PDF, my working document, and I'll just go back out of an edit mode. So the way to get multiple documents into one PDF, I would normally go up to the top left hand corner where it says create and just click on that. And you can see from here you can do a, a range of things. You can actually create a PDF from a file here, a very simple operation that's been available in Acrobat for many years. You can actually create a PDF from a screen capture. So I might just click that now, and now everything that was on my screen is now a PDF. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now, so we don't worry about that. Um, I could create a PDF from a window, from a window that's particularly open, it's highlighted at the moment. If I did that, it would just make a PDF out of that particular window. I could create a PDF from a, a selection. If I do that, I could click on that and just choose a little part of the screen let go, and now I've created a PDF of just that part of the screen. That's pretty cool. Close that and let's save it. Uh, if I had a scanner, I could uh, make a PDF from what I've been scanning. And this one's really good if you are, are a teacher of web design. And uh, when I taught Dreamweaver for a number of years, it was really hard to know how to assess their websites, especially if they weren't up on the internet. So to actually have the ability to turn a whole website into a PDF document is brilliant. And then you can actually um, annotate it and, and assess it and give it back to them in a PDF format so they can see how they went. But the combining files into a single PDF is what we're uh, on about now. So I'll click on that uh, function and this window comes up. 
as you can see, it's quite simple, it's quite intuitive. If I go to my Finder or on Windows, I go to my computer, and in my desktop, I've got a folio of resources here. This is um, a bunch. I've got a PowerPoint document, I've got a video file, I've got an image, a couple of PDFs, a Word document, another JPEG there, and an Excel sheet. So if I just grab all of those documents and drag them into here, it starts to build them all as one PDF. And you might be thinking to yourself, how's it going to convert a video into a PDF? Well, you're going to be quite surprised as it starts to do this. It's not going to take too long, I hope, because we've only got about eight minutes left in this webinar. So it's starting to build. And uh, so it's getting ready for me to combine. I'll click Combine now, and it's starting to build it. So what's happening now? PowerPoint presentation there. I want that. What's happening? I'll just jump out of here and click OK. Hopefully this is going to work for me. I actually tried this out this morning with the teachers that I had here today for a workshop, and it worked really well. So hopefully it'll work well now. Here we go. All right. What's happened now is it's created a 14-page, a 14-page uh, document of which you can see the first part of it is my PowerPoint. And if I scroll down, you can see all the slides in my PowerPoint. And I'll just skip the video. I'll just come back to the video. If I click into the video, it should start Welcome playing. Welcome to the Adobe and today at Colo Plato Public. I'll just pause that now. Hopefully you heard that. But it's actually playing the video on, through my PDF. So it's becoming a fully interactive multimedia experience. There's the JPEG I used earlier. It's pixelated quite a bit. It's only a low-res JPEG. There's a, uh, a PDF that I had. Uh, that's not too surprising. There's a screen dump or something. And there's a, a picture of a very handsome gentleman. And uh, that's the Excel sheet that's now converted into a set. It was actually just a, a very simple Excel with one title on it. So that's a great example of how you can combine multiple files into one PDF. Brett, any questions, comments at this stage? Yeah, Tim, actually, we've got a couple of good ones. Um, one question that Anne asked was, um, what would the PDF resolution of a screen capture be? What would the PDF resolution of a screen capture be? Good question. I think it's fairly low. Uh, judging by the size of the images, if I do a quick example now, if I just quickly go to PDF screen capture, so I'm capturing everything that's there, and if I quickly jump to my desktop, and we can have a quick look at that. It's a good question. Desktop, screen capture. Oh, that's not a good area. I think, to be honest, let me just uh, save that as into my desktop, screen capture. So it's nowhere it is. Uh, back to here. Work. No, give us one more go. Otherwise, we'll all run out of time, so I won't right, look at it later. Uh, Save as desktop. Save. Okay, got it. And you can see it's 2.4 megabytes, so it's still a reasonably high res. But uh, once it's in that mode, of course, you can use Photoshop to make it a lot smaller. But it's probably good to go bigger rather than smaller. And if I open that up separately, in fact, if I open it up in a different program, just to give you an idea of what its size, I'll use the, the generic. Um, Apple program just to see what it looks like. Looks good. I can magnify that fairly size and it's still fairly good res. Imagine. We'll get rid of the Apple product in case there's some Adobe people watching. Uh, that answers that question. Brett, we might hold the other question for a minute because there's one really cool thing I wanted to show everyone and that's the portfolio side of things which is very similar to what I've just done but a bit different. So if I get rid of that and what I'm going to do now is go to create again and drop down to where it says PDF Portfolio. If I click on that, this is amazing. What it does, it gives you a range of different styles for your digital portfolio for your kids at the end of term or at the end of a unit of work or at the end of semester or even at the end of the year. It could be a simple kind of linear type feel like this one, a click-through feel as they call it. It could be a free form feel like this. It gives you a folder and some documents in a free form method. It could be a grid like that, or it could be a more of a linear process like this. If you want to check out today, it's called the Wave version. I quite like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Wave. I'm going to go to Add Files. I'm going to choose all those same files that I just added before, and I'm going to click Finish. 
And what it's doing now is it's building the portfolio. And it should take about the same time as it took to make my combined PDF file. It's adding them all now. It's not too far. Remember, there is a video involved in this. So there's a bit of processing. But it seems to be working fairly quickly for me. Hopefully, I'll just go to preview and just see how it's looking. Still nothing yet. Maybe it still needs a bit more time. Maybe I've, uh, I've asked it to do a little bit too much. Hopefully that'll come up soon, but normally it's fairly quick. Maybe there's something else I need to do. There's hidden a button somewhere. No, all right. I'm going to try that process one more time. I'm going to go PDF Portfolio, Ways, Add File. I'm going to select all those different types of files. And I'm going to click Finish. Let's see if that prompts it into action. Don't you love it when a you're doing a, a webinar that's live. You want everything to work perfectly. That's not always the case. Seems to be a bit better now. Okay, so uh, something's not right. Normally it's, it's created by now. Anyway, I know that's something you can try. You can probably see where I'm making Brett, Can you see a, an obvious thing that I'm doing wrong there at all? No, I think it's just a matter of um, it's um, all coming across. Um, I've found that when building portfolios, especially with students, um, I get the um, Mr. Kent, it's broken comment, and just as they say that, it all happens. Um, it's one of those things where I find that it is going on in the background, just with a combination of video and audio and everything all together. It's uh, just, you know, taking its processing time. Yeah. You're probably right, although it worked really quickly earlier today. So have a go at it yourself. It does work really well. And as you can see, with the different layouts, you can get some really cool uh, portfolio fields and looks. And then you can save them onto a USB stick. It embeds into one document. That's the beauty of it. You wouldn't want to email it to anyone because it just becomes a huge file. But you can um, put it on a USB stick, send it home, uh, or onto a CD or a DVD or whatever way you want to uh, transport it. So look, we're just about out of time, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now. Start sharing, because we wanted to only stay within the half hour time slot, and we're just about there. And um, what I'm going to do is just go to my closing layout, because I'd really like you, in the last few seconds that we've got left, to give us a quick evaluation of how you felt this. We've got uh, the session was valuable, strongly agree through to strongly disagree. Don't click that. Uh, then we've got, I would recommend a session to others, and you've got strongly agree, agree, and, and so on. So feel free to do that. That's all anonymous. And what I'd like uh, you to be aware of is that there's some contact information if you want to have a chat with me at some point uh, through email. I've got my email address and my, my blog and my Twitter account uh, is uh, available there for you. And just another uh, advertisement for the next webinar, which is uh, Rob Swartz from America, and it's going to be 8 o'clock in the morning our time on Thursday, the September the 4th. When I say our time, I'm talking Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane at the moment. Uh, WA, you can do the calculations, and those of you who are in New Zealand, you can do the calculations as well, and uh, hopefully it'll be okay for you. All the sessions that I'm running for the rest of this year will be at this time at 6 o'clock. It seems to be a good time, whereas 8 o'clock is a little bit hard uh, for some parts of, of APAC, but uh, we will do what we can. So thank you, everyone, for taking part. Brett, thank you so much for uh, helping me out with this session. Not a problem at all, Tim. And I'm going to stop the recording, but if you want to hang on and ask some individual questions, please feel free to do that through the pod. Uh, Brett and I can just hang on for another few minutes and we can help you out with anything that you need help with. So last 10 seconds to do the, uh, the pod as I finish off the recording. Thanks for everyone who's watched the recording of this. Hopefully you have got something out of it and we look forward to getting you involved in other webinars down the track.